Boom, we're on. Oh, yes. <laughs> and today's guest, we've got Chris McQueer, author <laughs> of the book called Fing Hings. Sorry, Hings. <laughs> uh, first and foremost, mate, thanks for coming on. Oh, cheers for having us on, mate. Um, fucking buzzing to been hearing on. a lot about you, especially cheers, obviously with the book coming out. Aye, man. So, social media. Like I say, any questions on this show, mate? Aye, just we go just for talk, it. mate. Class. Talk about, uh, let's go back to the past, mate. Where, did, where you Aye, grew man. up and that, where it all started? Aye, man. So, um, I grew up in East End, so. Grew up in Garthamock, stayed there, I was about 10, and then done to Spring Boyg, just there in the road, done into Spring Boyg, and then been there ever since, mate. <laughs> Loving life. It's class, mate, aye. So where did the, when did the writing come out? When did that or us start yeah, appearing in your like, life? Um, I always wanted to be a writer, see when I was a wee boy, I always wanted to be a writer, but there was a wee voice in my head that was like, nah, you'd be shite at it. So I just never gave it a go, mate. It was always in my head, though, like, you should get it a go, you should maybe try it. And then it was only like two years ago, I thought, right, fuck it, I'm going to get it a go. I did, mate. I just sat down, wrote my first short story, mate, and then it's just off. I can kick off of there. It's been mental, mate. And it's been an unbelievable journey for it, hasn't you? Ah, it's been class, Because you're, you're everywhere with it. Aye. How many pages has this bad boy got? It's, I think it's 220 pages. Aye, man. It's a real book, mate, aye. It is a proper book, mate. I was expecting to meet you tonight, mate. It was going to be a wee, a wee Snyder, mate. So it was. But listen, aye, fair play to you, and I've seen that. Like, obviously, Lemmy and that's got spoke about in it uh, aye, here. Irvin Welsh, you were saying, aye, you're trying to get a hold of him. Try to get a hold of him, man. I try to get him a copy. So I've gave him a copy. I met him at his, um, his book lunch. Gave him a copy. I don't know if he's read it or not yet, but we'll see. Hope he likes it. And this it's, is the guy, it's, he, he wrote the book for train spotting. Man, aye, so he's like my hero, you know what I mean? He's so like, Irvin, get your finger out. <laughs> get ready. <laughs> so you said you used to do all this. When you, how, where did that come about? It's, for Glasgow, mate, we don't really kind of get into the I know, mate, I know. authors and I books. Know, and there's probably, like I say, there's probably a lot of geniuses out there who have yeah, got visions to write books and that, and they're probably too scared. That's that Glasgow voice coming in, you're I no good me, enough. Aye, you're shite, me. you can't do it. That is, mate. So you started writing when? It was, it was two years ago, mate. So um, I just fucking broke down a really shit, man. I had to move back in my ma. Hmm. And um, I was working part time in a sports shop. I was just fucking hating life, mate. I was like, that's just horrendous, man. And then my dog died. And I was like, Jesus Christ, man. Pure X Factor, sub story, you know hmm. what I mean? But I was like, that's just fucking brutal, man. Like, I just felt as if like, all my mates were overtaking me. You know what I mean? Like, I was 24, backstabbing with my mom. Um, my mates were all buying houses, getting promoted to work and all that, and I'm working in a sports shop. And I was like, fucking hell, man, I've made a cunt of this year. Like. And then it was like, I don't know, man, I just thought, fuck it, I'm going to give this a go, I'm going to give writing a go, you know what I mean? Maybe I could pull myself out of this hole through writing, mm. kind of thing. And then um, sat down, wrote my first story, let my mom read it. She was like, fucking hell, this is decent. I was like, what? So I was pure worried. I was like, because it's going to think I'm some kind of weirdo. I think mm-hmm. she think, like, she was a bit like, I don't know, she's like, what are you doing? Writing stories for, what's this all about? I was like, it's all right, read it, it's cool. Are you nervous <laughs> I about it? Fucking, I was, mate, I was fucking nervous, right, man. But I was more scared about, like, telling my mates that I'd been writing. Mm-hmm. So honestly, mate, it felt as if I was, like, coming out the closet or something. Like, mental, <laughs> man. Like, listen, boys, listen, boys, I write stories, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Aye. And, um, I don't want to quit this weekend. I'm, I'm <laughs> going to write a novel. <laughs> Aye, man. Aye. That's what it's like, mate. But, um, like they weren't they? Give me pelters out and they were just like, fuck it, I'll get on you, man. And then I let them read it and they were like howling, man. They were saying, these are fucking funny as fuck. And that, just, that gave me the confidence, mate, to keep going. I was putting my stuff online and then within maybe like, I think it was within eight months, publisher got in touch with me, like, these stories are good. You fancy putting them in a book? That's that's what mm-hmm. became Hings, man. So That's unbelievable, but. Mental, mate. Were you nervous? So that, that's that Glasgow mentality, scared time, to make yeah, moves, aye. to do anything different. Aye, man. Instead of that, 95, I sitting drinking. Me. Mad at the me. weekend. I know, man. Do you know what I mean? It, it, it takes a lot of guts. Did you find it was a lonely journey then? Writing big the book? Time, mate, aye, big time. Because, yeah, you're just, you're no getting out at the weekend. You're staying in, you're staying, sitting in my room at my laptop writing stories, you know what I mean? And people are going, just patch it, just come out. And I'm like, no, I think I, think I, can, I can do something with this, you know what I mean? I think I want to something here, you know what I mean? So it was kind of just ignoring the kind of temptation to patch it and mm-hmm. go out. And that's what, I don't know, man. I just, Sacrifice, aye, mate. Aye, sacrifices, aye, mate. mate. Like I say, you've got one life, and aye, mate. to follow your dreams and do it, it takes courage. Aye, and there's aye, not man. many people in Glasgow doing what they want to do. I know, man. Do you know it's what I mean? It's fucking West of Scotland attitude, isn't it? It's aye. Just, they don't. I would even say it's worldwide, weird, mate. Nobody weird, believes man. in herself. That's why we hide behind the drink or the drugs or whatever the fuck it is. But aye, today, man. a book, man. Twenty four, you're at this. Twenty four hours, and I started drinking that. Aye, so. Mm-hmm. But the good aye, thing man. is we've got another one coming out as well. New ones out. Right out there, know what I mean? Promote, promote, <laughs> promote. Aye, man. New ones out in November. 8th of November. So it's called HWFG. So Here we fucking here go. Here we fucking go, mate. Aye. Where did that idea come from? That was just, that wasn't my idea, the title. That was the publishers came up with that. No, so he's a fraud now. I know, not got the real deal anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, man. I wanted to call it something else. I was going to call it Repeat Prescription. 
Because I was like, right, it's mere short stories and that, but they're going to be weird on darker, like repeat prescription. It's like another dose of short stories. It's going to be good. Because this, like, this is a big one. So we've got another, you're saying there's another 10,000 words. Aye, new ones. 10,000 words longer. So that'll be, I don't know, man. I think that's another. I have about 260, 270 pages, something like that. So. And how did you not get your name on it? My title wasn't that good, mate. Yeah, it was the one I came up with. I thought it was good. And then a couple of week, after a couple of weeks, kind of thinking, I'm talking about the publisher, they were like, I hate to break it to you, but was, your title's a bit shite. Like <laughs> and I was like, do you know what? I as they just quite do, isn't it? It's uh-huh. like repeat prescription. It's I quite right. like it, mate. It sounds like Glasgow, mate. It does, mate. But then they said to us, like, we think you should call it here. We fucking go just HWFG, like oh. four big letters on the front of the book. And I was like, actually, that's fucking that's better. <laughs> How long did it take you to write that? That was again. I started writing it as soon as I finished that one. I was writing to writing the new one, so that was an hour. But a year, year and a half writing the new one. So, so you've got the buzz now to. To keep Aye, going, man, that's what it's all about. My they're telling man, you, just they're, keep uh, going, everything they new in the papers and that they're saying you're going to be one of the best offers that Scotland's ever seen. That's what they say, mate. Fucking the pressure, you know what I mean? But that's <laughs> a fucking hell of a bit of pressure <laughs> to know, hold on your shoulders, isn't it? But fuck it, I'm into it, man. I'm just quite happy to try and. Is the fire burning then? Home, mate. Big time, mate. That's what Jay Cinnamon says, isn't it? Bonnie's burning. That's exactly. Say, mate, so. Aye, man, I'm going to quite Fair happy. Fair play to you, mate. On, mate so. Guy for Go Farm, look, mate. Book it. <laughs> Next one, mate. How do people get this book, the one that's coming out? New one, same as this one, so you can get it from my publisher's website, so 404inc.com. Get it on there, you can get it in Waterstones, like mm-hmm. by Gale Street, Suck Hill Street, whatever, on, on Amazon as well. Get it on there. Type in my name, it's a name you won't fucking forget. Trust me, queer. It's my own name, in. by the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mate, fair play to you, because like I say, it's been all, we follow each other on, we're all on social media, but Aye, man. Uh, Martin Comston and all that tweeting and uh, every day there's a, somebody else reading it Aye. always seeing fucking hard and only say that it's just oh, like I say to, a weird to, feeling uh, see seeing people like reading my book because like see when I signed the deal on that the publishers were like we're going to print uh, 500 copies of this and I was like fucking hell man I don't know 500 people are we going to sell <laughs> 500 books man and they're like fucking trust us it'll be right. and I started thinking I was like fucking man I can do this I can sell 500 books man Sold the five hundred, like just in like pre orders, know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So they're like, right, we need to print half mail, we're gonna print half a thousand. Like, Fucking hell. Sold them and all. So it's just it just keeps going, mate. It's just staying better than, just them it's staying better than any thought it was gonna, so just but, uh, your brilliant. expectations, mate, and for, for shooting by them then fair play, but the that's next one right. we've got to go bigger and better, aren't we? Mate, I've got I've got a good feeling about the next one, I think it's better. So I do. And you've got a big following, haven't you? Ah, it's good, man. It's built up kinda of steadily all the years, man. It's been good. Man. Where does your ideas come from? Because they're fucking, they're madness, aren't they? Ah, mental, mate, aye. Um, I was saying to you earlier, mate, my head's just fried, you know what I mean? It's just Join the club, brother, don't worry about it. Aye, mate, it's just growing up in East End, mate, growing up in my scheme, you're just, you're surrounded by fucking inspiration everywhere, you know what I mean? You can either be dragged in by it or you can look at it and be inspired by it, you know what I mean? Like, growing up in Gathamilton and then Spring Boy, you're just surrounded by just mental characters everywhere and there's just mad shit happening. It's just so much stuff that happens and it just talking at. I'm taking it on, I'm thinking, like, how can I turn this into a story? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What can I do with this, man? Any daft story I hear my mate telling us, I think, right, how can I fucking blow that up? How can I make that funny? You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. Make money off your mates, isn't it? Me, yeah. Get them all mad, <laughs> it. Fold them up with Charlie and Booze, mate. Just listen, I mate. Am. Just write all our ideas down. Is there anybody I in this book that you, they know that they're in a, a story about them? There's a few, mate. Is that? Or do they know? No, they all know, man. They've all read it. They've been like, Fucking is that me? Is that me? You're wrong. Couple, me. I, 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 <laughs> one, of them, one of them's about my granny, and she clocked it, and she was like, "Is that fucking? Is that about me?" I was like, <laughs> she fucking raging, raging. <laughs> There was another one I wrote thin me. One of my mates sent it. Wrote my mate Jamie into it, and a mad story. And um, I put that story online, and he read it, and he popped up about it. And he's like, mm-hmm. "I can't believe you fucking wrote me in that." And then he came to the book launch, and that story's in the book. And then, but he fucking got his own back at the book lunch. We were doing like a QA at the book lunch, mm-hmm. and he put his horn up. I was like, Jamie, what do you want to ask? And he's like, I just want to ask, like, there's a lot of drugs and stuff in your stories. I just want to ask, you know, in front of your, front of your mom and your, your granny and your girlfriend's mom and dad, you know, how, how do you know so much about drugs? Kind of asking me stuff like that, mate. Fly grass. Arsehole, mate. Arsehole. <laughs> no, I mean, it's good to have mates like that to keep you fucking grounded. Keep me sane, mate, don't you? Yeah. I wish I could say the same, mate. All my mates are fucking <laughs> cuckoo, man. I try and stay back for the bastards as much as possible. <laughs> no, in Glasgow, mate, like I say, it's hard to get recognition. It's hard to get the respect, especially doing something different. Aye, Do you know what I mean? Writing books or even starting a podcast. It's, Aye, man. It's weird that as much as people want to see you strive, there's also what people want to see you fall flat in your face, oh, yes, which right. is difficult. How have you how have you dealt with like, social media kind of things? And have you had any hate or? It's been alright. It's been kind of it's been like say it's been like ninety five percent 
positive mm. all that kind of stuff I get um, a couple of wee cunt, a couple of wee cunts having bigs at his on Twitter and that you get people saying you know yeah I remember I tweeted something I tweeted something about um, like Scottish people using mad American phrases mm-hmm. I was just slagging it I was like fuck's that all about man your face though that's why you're talking like you're mm-hmm. from LA you know what I mean <laughs> I tweeted that and um, this mad lassie's like oh you you just think you're something now because you've wrote a book you think you're something I'd be saying that if I hadn't wrote the book. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think I'm something. I'm still, just saying I could. Fucking so day. Long, you, know what I mean? you go to see about it. You're daft. Day. He does. He's wrote two <laughs> books. What you done with your life? You stupid cow. I'm <laughs> saying. Oh, don't man, take that shit. That annoys me, man. That fucking annoys me. When people say like, you think you're something, like you fucking just try to do something a bit different. I mean, doesn't oh, mean I think I'm not my ass. Six Steffi's microphones. <laughs> for a pretty place. This cheap <laughs> shit you've got. <laughs> <laughs> I can on and fix it, get a wee face in. This is <laughs> Steph who we slag every week, week in, week out. <laughs> Fuck's sake, man. Try it on a show here. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes, look. There the man, there himself. The guy who loves the Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, Chris, mate. Well, I'm trying it on a professional <laughs> show here, but... It looks like we'll try to get a new sound man in next week, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> aye, where were we? Slagging the bird that was saying you and hated. Aye, man, aye, man. Stirred. It's just like, I don't know, that annoys me if you even come to say to me, oh, you think you're something because you've wrote a book. I don't think I'm something. I know. Like, still stay and I can still have some armor, you know what I mean? I'm, fucking, I'm still just... Jealousy still, about envy, that's what I'm like. saying. The more successful you become, mate, the more hate you're going to get. That's the, that's the whole part of the journey, but, know, man, but the more shit, the more enemies you get, mate, it just shows you they're succeeding. You're doing aye, well. Man. And it's, it's difficult, mate, because we all want to be liked. We all want people to I accept know, mate, us. And we want the support. When you don't get it, I'm the same, mate. I go hiding. Aye, I get a negative comment, mate. I can get a thousand good. I've spoken about it before. Aye, I go, I want to kill that bastard. <laughs> because I can't help it, mate. It, it hurts oh, me. Man. And I, I, oh, that's mate. a wee bit of ego and a wee bit of pride. Oh, and no, no, it's difficult. Man. It's a Glasgow mentality, mate. That is, man. Isn't that it? is, man. I get that and obviously we like bad reviews and that. I used to read, man, see when the first book first came out, man. I was like reading all the reviews. I was like, mm-hmm. fucking, I need to see what every cunt's saying. Mm-hmm. It was all good, man. All good. First few were brilliant, man. And then you get your first bad one. They just knocked me. Like, oh, fuck, man. <laughs> no way to write another book. Like, no, man, I'm jacked in, man. This is it. Game over. <laughs> then you just you just think, fuck it, man. It's just one person's opinion, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? You're not going to please everybody. Ah, exactly. You know I mean? so and you've got to learn to deal with it. You start focusing the, on the good ones. Exactly. You know I mean? so the that criticism. Keeps me going, aye. Aye. That keeps me going. And then see the criticism now and I'm like, right, well. I'm going to write a book that you do fucking like, you know what I mean? I'm going to get better, so you can't, mm. you know, if they slag, like, part of my writing and say it's no good enough for the slag of style of writing, I just think, right, well, fuck it, I'm just going to try and get better, you know what I mean? I'm mm-hmm. just going to take what you're saying, take it on board and make sure mm-hmm. you like my next one, you know what I mean? Where if you don't like that, I'll make sure you like exactly, your next one after exactly. that. Exactly, <laughs> it's trial and error on that. Except, man, like I say, you've already wrote one success for your first ever book. Aye, man. And then you've got your second one coming out. What's, Aye, so where do you, where do you, where is your goals with all this? What's, where do you, what's the outcome for you? I want to keep, first goal is just, I want to keep doing this for a living. Mm-hmm. The last couple of months, I've been able to jack in the job. So I jacked in, working in the sports shop, and you know, I'm writing full time. It's fucking brilliant, by the magic. So, it's, but, um, so I want to keep being able to do that. So then, I've wrote, that's two books of short stories I wrote. My next goal is to write a novel, like a big full length book, big, mm-hmm. big full length story, write that. If I can get that done, I want to try and write for the telly. You know what I mean? Try and mm-hmm. write a series for the telly, you know what I mean? Like, write something like Black Mirror, something mm-hmm. like that. Oh, that's just fucking ultimate, nuts, aye, mate. Aye, man. So then, after that, my ultimate goal would be like to write a film, and get like a film made. That would be a fucking. That's a dream, mate. That's so a dream if you, your head right screwed on your shoulders, mate, you've got visionary dreams. Me, you need to have a why to get up in the morning. Yeah, phone, because yeah. if you don't, like I say, there's nothing matter working in a sports show, but are you really fulfilling that potential because you're getting up and you're that's hating it, life? Now you've aye. got a why where you're buzzing to get up. You'll have aye, your, your lulls where you'll be fucked a day or two and aye. you're depressed and you think you're. Even though you write a book, you, even this when it came out, you probably saying to yourself, is that it? It's aye good man, at the time, but aye. then you still probably feel the same. <laughs> do, but, do you know what I mean? Aye, man. So it's all about keep going, mate, aye, and getting man. another one out. I sure. I think as well, man. I'm just and not, the doors that won't, mate, it's unbelievable. It's good, mate. Aye, it's fucking... I think as well, man. I'm just a main must critic. You know what I mean? I'm always, just always trying to out there myself. You know what I mean? I write something, and I think, oh, fuck, that's good. Mm-hmm. And then I put it away. Then the next day, I'm like, right, read that again and I'm like no I can do better like, I can do better I just want to keep pushing myself and keep trying mm-hmm. to do better that's what it's all about man but that's what it's all about mate keep going to strive and to better that's yourself me, can you so when these came out can you t- obviously can, can we turn like, films or anything or do things like that or? I think so man like, I'm trying to get it adapted I'm trying to get that book adapted for the telly so like a wee uh-huh. six part series so right. take six of the either get like six of the stories and adapt them into like a kind of half an hour mm-hmm. telly episode or make wee kind of mini ones like make like like three stories Per half an hour episode, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We kind of 10 minute stories, we 10 minute videos, make them into a wee programme. Like that's, 
that's the kind of format I'd like to do that. So I've pitched it to the BBC a couple of times. Mm-hmm. They've knocked me back, but I'm just going to keep going. I mean, mm-hmm. they'll say I eventually, mate. Uh-huh. <laughs> Definitely. Like I say, you just got to keep knocking at the door until eventually. Mean, that's it, man. I like that. To read two books, mate. I'm proud of you. Cheers, man. I'm fucking proud of you. We're playing an old firm greats game on Sunday, aren't we? We're opening doors, mate, aren't we? Two scheme boys <laughs> hanging about with the legends. Are you buzzing for it? I can't wait, mate. I fucking cannot wait, man. Lining up beside fucking Rudy Vatt and Mark Wilson. Ah, Rudy Vatt. Mate, did there a gap myself? That's a dream, man. Ah, the old firm greats game we're playing in against all the old... Old legends, know what I mean? Me now you've got two Malcolm. fucking... Aye, he's getting done. <laughs> You're getting done, Bob. Yeah. Now two up-and-coming legends, mate, innit? That's it, mate. That's it, man, aye. It's good to see, see guys like yourself, man, like Gary Falls and like D-Maxwell. Mm-hmm. Like, just mm-hmm. like... Seeing people for the scheme doing well, because I say this all the time, like, see, being for a scheme, it gives you like a certain mentality and it kind of mm-hmm. equips you for fucking real life better than aye. most people. Mm-hmm. I think it just gives you a kind of... Gives you more steel about you, a bit mm-hmm. of dig about you. Of course it does. Do you feel as if... I feel as if, though, when I'm doing this stuff, I don't deserve it. I don't I, deserve no, it. Right. I'm doing all, I've, everything we've created, me and my boys here, man, it's been it's non funded, mate. It's Aye. just ha- just with vision, Aye, work ethic, belief system. It's we've created all this out of absolutely nothing. Like I say, we've just hurt gonna promote ourselves here. We just hurt <laughs> one point five million views, mate, it's and the social media it. platform Amazing, in six months, which is unbelievable. We we hurt our twenty five episodes. Class. This is just with vision, mate. That's and work mean. ethic to believe in yourself, I and, and all the doubt was and all the haters at the start. And it does it, it can be disheartening, but if you aye. believe in yourself to keep fucking going, man, nothing can stop That's you. Mean, like, like, you're saying earlier, man, the only person that can stop you is yourself. It's yourself, I'm aye. Saying. But that's, you still don't feel as if you deserve it. You've came know, across man. the it's imposter syndrome, man. That's what call aye. it. Aye. Is it? Fucking, that's it, mate. Aye, you ah. think fucking. You get it, a lot of other writers say they've got it like imposter syndrome. Like, oh, I don't deserve this. I'm not as good a writer as everybody else, but. I don't know, man. I feel as if like I'm not as good as other people, but I think I've got just as much right to be publishing books as them. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? I'm just going to keep. And if I'm not, if I don't think I'm as good as somebody else, I'm just going to try and get better. And better try them. And That's all you can do. Try and overtake them. Is to see that doubt, mate, the place where he done it. That we're well, no good enough. For, <laughs> Oh, I need to stop that one negative comment all right oh, I, I, I need to stop man. I need to stop working on what I've done everything I've worked oh, on the last fucking four years to create something <laughs> I'm just going to get it up for some ball bag I know, mate. who's sitting in her house probably <laughs> fucking sucking off his dog mate and just hating on life mate but that they, they, that still upsets me mate because oh, I'm man. sensitive man oh, I'm really sensitive. It's that one bad comment. I mean, you can get a hundred good comments and you're <laughs> like fucking magic and then the one bad one mm. that's the one you focus on that's the one that fucks you but. are you going to get another one out it's true. When are you going to plan the next one? This one's not even out yet, but I'm still full. <laughs> when? So, <laughs> Aye, have you got a plan? How many books you want to do a year? I thought about. I'd like to do one a year, but it's good to get the kind of. I like the momentum of two years. Do you know what I mean? I like building up the hype. Every two years is good. Do you know what I mean? So you've got one book. Say, like, I've got my new book coming out this year. Mm-hmm. That'll do good, and then next year, by the hype, talk about the new one. And then take a year off, and then get people talking about mm-hmm. when's the next one going to come out, but, and then bring it the next mm-hmm. one after that, but. But if I've not got a fucking book out there, I'm not making money. Mm-hmm. So it's like fucking. So it's a funny one, mate. But one a year to know, I think. Do it really for you. Properly establish myself. And and then, uh, try yeah. not burn yourself out either. I know, because you don't want to lose your love for it. But later, as now you've got the fire. I sit, well, you want to keep churning them out. I sit, mate. I, just, I write every day, man. It's, just, it's the first thing, honestly. It's the first thing I've ever been good at. So I'm like, well. I'm just jump on it and I'm just going to keep doing it. And you clearly love it. See, I used to always think a writer, mate, just sitting in a fucking cupboard. Big grey hair, mate, Aye, just man. writing away, man. The geniuses. That's what everybody thinks, mate. I think that's what I thought. I think that's what put me off writing for so long because I think it's just all guys and all women. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and then, but it's no, mate. Like, it's fucking, like, I've met hundreds of other cunts, like, loads of other people that the same age as me and that, that are doing it. They're all trying to do it, all trying to make it. There's hundreds of so just at home. Oh, is there a lot of people? Is a lot of people trying to do it? See, I don't, I don't know any authors. I know. JK man. Rowling. <laughs> and then as well, like, fucking, because of the writing and that, I was able to go through to Adiwell, the jail, like, through uh-huh. Edinburgh. And then there's a big creative writing program in there. Let's like, see the guys in there, mate. Just mega talented. You know what I mean? So, like, they've got all the time in the world, obviously. Aye. Sit and think about their stories Aye. and that. But the stuff these guys are writing is phenomenal, man. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's just, I don't know, man. So, if I didn't realise there were so many writers. Aye, man. So, you need a bit of luck and awe. Like, in life, luck, a wee break. Mate, yeah, that's it, man. How did you get your break? So, this was through social media, wasn't it? Aye, mate. Again, mate. Just pure luck, mate. Just, um, Followed my publisher for I think they were just starting out at the time I was just starting out writing books, so they mm-hmm. just they were just starting to publish stuff. And um so I just followed them on Twitter and then they started publishing like a wee magazine of short stories and they were just asking people like send the short stories, we put them on this wee magazine. Mm-hmm. So I was like, alright, fuck it, brass neck it, sent them man. And they liked it, so they did. They were like, ah, brilliant, they liked it. So they had like a launch party for their magazine, they invited me through, and they were like, Do you want to come on stage and like read out read out your story? Mm-hmm. I was like, fucking no chance, man, like 
Your ass claps? Nah, mate, aye. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know you could go on stage and read out short stories. Uh-huh. I thought you could only go on stage and like, they stand up comedy and that, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? But, um, so I went on stage, read out my story, I eventually fucking worked up the cows, man. I had like four cans on the train to kind of calm my nerves. Well, sure Edinburgh, man, aye. Got a couple of when I got there, I went up, told my story. And um, get loads of laughs, mate, honestly. Came off the stage feeling fucking 10 feet tall, it was brilliant. Came off and the publishers came up to us like, oh, that was really good. And I thought, right, fuck it, never, never. Now's your chance. I was like, look, I've, I've wrote a book. Basically, I've got enough stories. Just, would you just publish it? And they're like, fucking aye, definitely. Let's send us it. And I was like, right, I will do. And I went home, woke up the next morning. I was thinking about it and I was like, nah, they'll just be nice. Like, I should, they would say that. They wouldn't, they wouldn't say no, you know what I mean? So I never sent them it. And it was two weeks later, they emailed me like, where's this book you were going to send us? I was like, fuck, man, they were being serious. Sent them it and they're like, I love it. Fancy coming through Edinburgh for a meeting and we'll get it all sorted, get all the paperwork and all that sorted. And that was me, mate, through Edinburgh, signing a book deal. Just fucking surreal, man. That's mad, isn't mad, it? Mad, mate. That's and just the two years of writing. Were you writing before it, but Were you writing it? And... I kind of tried, mate. Obviously, you're day writing at school and that, and they get you day mm-hmm. stuff and like English and that, but I didn't like the kind of stuff. They're making you write, mad, like personal reflective essays. Uh, so it's like write about something pure difficult that's happened in your life, write about a family mm-hmm. member that's died and that. I was like, this is fucking it's a bit grim, isn't it? A bit grim, mate, and it kind of. You lose, it doesn't give you that kind of love of writing, mm-hmm. I mean, they should be encouraging you to write mad shit and just mm-hmm. write whatever you want instead of that, you know what I mean? So that kind of put me off writing. And then when I was 14, when I was 14, I kind of tried to get a go and I got like two pages into writing a book and I was like, this is fucking shit, man, just patched it, just mm-hmm. gave up, you know what I mean? Back out, playing football or whatever, just no caring about writing. Mm-hmm. And that was me up until I was 24 and then I thought, just, it was always there, mate, always in the back of my mind, should get a go, should get a go, because I've always been a big reader. I've read some amount of shit and I've been like, fucking, I could do better than that, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then it was, mate, just two years ago, I thought, oh, I'm going to do it, I'm just going to get a go. And then, turned out I was alright at it and I just fucking kept going. And fucking better than alright, bro, man. That's, <laughs> that's a, a, full, a full book, man, and another one coming out. I know, man. I've not had a chance to just like, sit back and fucking take it on because it's just been non stop, which has been good. Which has been good, mate, because it, it's it's so. diff- it can be difficult. Do you drink it then? Not as much as I used to, because obviously. When you're like 18 and that, you start going out. I mean, well, mm-hmm. when you're 16, you start going to the Sav and Vicky's and that. Because like. usually, like I say, there's so many stories I've read, obviously, the stuff you put online. Aye. This is like acid stories as well, you trippy <laughs> shit, mate. I'm like, I need, I need, if I was still going at me, I'd be chatting your door, mate. We'd have some party up there, mate. I know, man. I know, man. Do you look at the... See, when you do your, your short stories, Aye. do you think to yourself, right, that's fucking crazy. Do you know but it's good also how do you know what's, how do you know, there's a couple I've wrote and I've thought nah it's actually just too weird it's like just it's too weird if you know what I mean and then there's other ones I've thought nah this isn't weird enough man this could be better you know what I mean <laughs> like I was thinking like see when I was writing that book like it was in my mind like it was still in my head that like you know I don't want people to think I'm weird you mm-hmm. know what I mean but then writing my new book mm-hmm. I put that out man every cunt knows I'm weird now mm-hmm. I know I'm weird I'm quite happy with it so I'm like, everybody's it. weird mate exactly mate so see my new book man it's, fucking, it's a lot weirder than that so <laughs> Which, you know what mate read out one of your read, read out a short story you your sure best one aye get it out of it aye I read out this wee one mate I know I read out one called Davey right that's just I want to hear one out. just a wee short one mate I think it's like one of the funniest ones in the book so you'll like this mate let's go <laughs> Be bedtime story, mate. Right, so this is Davy, right? Davy was a big man. He was a very big man. And he loved his tattoos. It's my phone away. He loved his tattoos. He loved them so much. Thank you. Cheers. He dedicated his life to stuffing his face, getting bigger and fatter, so that he could get even more, stretching his skin to breaking point. Davy reckoned that his body had the same surface area as four king sized duvets. And he was particularly proud he's got gantuan arse. It was the only part of his body that he kept free of tattoos for years, but now Davy believed it was finally big enough for work to begin on his latest masterpiece. Davy printed off the picture of what he wanted inked upon his derriere. It was the pyramids of Egypt. There was no spiritual reason for this, he had no connection to Egypt or anything like that. He just liked the pyramids, he thought it looked <laughs> quite cool, right? But Davy was steaming when he printed off the picture though, because he couldn't get tattooed when he was sober, right? It was far too sore. So he didn't even realise he'd printed off the ring picture. He fell into the tattoo shop an hour later. Alec, Davy's favourite artist, smiled at the sight of this mammoth man lumbering into his shop. Alec had made a fortune after Davy over the years. Take a seat, big chap, said Alec, pulling on a blue latex glove. What would we do in the day then? Davy fumbled around in his pockets for the picture. Here, he said, thrusting the folded up piece of paper into Alec's horn, I want this and I want it on Mars. 
Alec unfolded the picture and gave a wee chuckle. You never fail to surprise me, Davy. Get your bahooky out then. <laughs> Davy obliged and he pulled down his grey joggy bottoms, revealing his cellulite ridden buttocks. His arse was so big and so dimpled that it looked like a memory foam mattress that had been scalped with a hundred tennis balls. <laughs> Alec got to work, meticulously portraying the landscape onto Davy's gluteus maximus. It was a landscape they were actually both very familiar with. Davy passed out a few moments after the needle made contact with his skin. After a couple of hours, Alec wiped off the last of Davy's thick, cholesterol-laden blood and admired his work. Davy, Davy, wake up, big man, that's you done, Alec said, and he gave Davy an open palm spank. Davy rose groggily for his slumber, his head thumping and his arse throbbing. He ambled out of the mirror with his joggies and knickers still over his ankles, <laughs> cut his cock and balls in one hand. <laughs> He turned round so he could see his new tattoo. He could definitely make it a pyramid, but it wasn't of the Egyptian kind, <laughs> or the Mayan kind, or even Aztec or Inca. It was of the Scottish kind. It was unmistakably the Forge shopping centre. <laughs> <laughs> Davy screwed up. Oh, finished. Oh, he's so finished. Gets better. Gets better. Davy screwed up his eyes. He thought he must have been in the midst of some vivid bucky induced dream, but he wasn't. <laughs> The greeny blue glass of the forge's pyramidal entrance stood out beautifully against the pale skin of Davy's right arse cheek. Just left his crack sat a throng of trolleys, and to the right, a wee old woman, weighed down by her bags of messages, waited for a bus. A bin overflowed with McDonald's Happy Meal boxes and fagged outs. The whole scene recreated in startling realism by Alec. Davy fucking loved it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Cheers, man. That's what we're in that book. Get it, boy. <laughs> Where the fuck did you get that story for? That's what I want to know. <laughs> like I say, mate, he's fucking wasted. Uh, <laughs> but it's no, mate, that, that's... Your creativity is buzzing at your nut. Aye, man. Do you know what I mean? Do you, do you, do you get dreams? Nightmares? Just fucking mad dreams, mate. Aye. Do you? Basically, a lot of times I wake up during the night, mate, and I just fucking make a mad note on my phone, like the mad dream I've had or whatever, and then I'll just fucking try and write it down. Make like, it into something, but it's a bit... That's it, man. You ever done stand-up comedy? I tried it, mate. I've done a wee bit at the Glasgow Comedy Festival. Last, well, it was this year actually, it was back in March. And um, it was fuck, it was good, mate. I really enjoyed it, but I don't know, man. I like being fucking like, behind, behind the scenes, you know what I mean? I like being the man who's writing stuff. Ah, no, I mean, that's what I mean. It's, it's good fun, mate, but it's, I like doing, I do a lot of stuff where I perform my stories and that. I mm-hmm. do a lot of that. But that's different, you know what I mean? That's different for stand up comics. I've got the book in front of me, you know what Aye. I mean? It's all written down. Instead like, of thinking on your kinda, feet. I have got a kind of shield, you know what I mean? I know what I'm going to say. And mm-hmm. I've read them all out before, I know, I know what gets laughs and stuff, mm-hmm. I know how to time it and that. Whereas, Stand up comedy, mate. It's a different, different beast, isn't it, mate? It's a fucking different game, mate. It, it takes some bottle. It's it, is, a, it takes a hell of a lot of bottle, and it's a craft that. Aye, man. It's I've such got, a craft, man. It's. Aye, man. It's, it's, I've got you've a lot got of it. You guys like Guy Falls and Chrissy Ross. Aye. And fucking like D Maxwell and that, man. Like. It takes some bottle because you know that's yourself. Enough, that's not just a case of ninety five percent positive. Aye. There's so much negative comes oh. the that you're getting slaughtered because everybody wants to be funny. That's it's the thing in life everybody wants to be. Aye, man. And if you don't go it, then you're going to certain point the fingers at everybody. Else, oh man, you've got to try and pull them down, and that's why I've got so much respect for Gary and D because they take some shit, but Aye. yet the things they're achieving is unbelievable. Aye, brilliant, man. And they, they, they believe in themselves, it's because they're pals with me, right enough. But <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's a the stand up comedy, man. For anybody that does it, it's tough, Aye. it's a tough gig. I, I done it last Aye, year, man. but I wasn't feeling it, man, because Aye. it nah, <laughs> I was nah, it's, it's tough, man. It's like a mask, isn't it? You put it on. I was drained after I was doing it. Aye. I was totally drained yeah, because you're getting so much energy away. Aye, and for any, every, every, listen, everybody comedian will tell you they're all fucked in the head. Aye, they're all bonkers. Aye, man. Do you know what I mean? They're, they're crazy. You'd have to be to stay on the stage and crack man. jokes. And, <laughs> but anybody that does that, Aye, the massive respect Aye, has to go man. to them. Anybody that does it in life, you've got to give them massive Aye, respect. Put yourselves out there. Putting yourself out there and creating something, like I say, it takes guts, man. No matter what anybody's doing, Aye, if you're definitely. trying, then what else can you do? But for me, man, you, a lot of people don't fulfill that potential that everybody can do something great, man. And sang, mate, aye. A lot of people oh, don't know where they want to go in life. That's it, man. Good to myself, man. I, know, I talk all this positive <laughs> piss, mate. I go in my bed and greet every night, mate. Scream myself <laughs> to sleep. You know what I mean? I'm a fraud. I'm a fraud. Aye, you're doing well, mate. You're doing well. Fucking Many man. short stories are in that. It's 25 in that. 25 short stories, no, kind of like vary in length, you know what I mean? So that we want to read out, that's the shortest one. Is it? Then, so that's like a page and a half, and then the longest one's like 30 pages, you know what I mean? So, so it's not really short stories, but is it? 
I know, man, a short story. Normally they say it's between like five and ten pages, but I like fucking playing about with that. No, I mean, mm-hmm. if you can tell the story in a page and a half, fine, man. If it takes you 30 pages, mm-hmm. I'm sound, man. I'm so, did you know reenact these, these stories that you're saying in one, one video, one, like, I think you one long that, film? I, I, that's my goal, like I'm saying, man. I mean, pitching that to mm-hmm. the BBC, like. To somebody sitting see, there, like, aye. But like, things like that's something like somebody see that story about him and his ass getting tattooed. Aye. That's <laughs> something he could use and still game. Definitely, mate. Do you know what I mean? Man. I'd love to be a, like write for something like that. See, right, like is that write. not a director? Then it comes into play as well. Yeah, the creative mindset. Ah, you get like a kind of script right? I would write it, and then the director would kind of take it, and he would kind of put his own spin on it. Know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You get that to stack to it, and he'd say like, right, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. We've got to try it this way. Spin it about, say this instead of doing that. No, I mean, what if we do this instead? Kind of thing. So, have you never been to college or uni? I went to college see, after I got that book published. So, I, just, I left school when I was 16, so I just fucking hated education, it just wasn't for me. So, I just went right into working. But then, once I published that, I thought, right, I'd like to try and like, I was just winging it when I was writing that. I didn't really have a clue what I was doing. I just thought, I'll just write it how I think it should be written. And then, after I got published, I thought, right, I'd like to try and figure out how to do it properly man so I applied for college and I went to City of Glasgow College and um, done like professional writing skills it's called so it's just teaching you how to write basically mm-hmm. how to write short stories how to do it properly how to write for the telly how to write for the radio and all that and um, if I can improve my writing like big time you know what I mean like shows you all my bad habits and all the stuff you do shite and like mm-hmm. it makes you better mate so that's what it's all about like self improvement and that. that's what I'm on that's what I'm into so but like, you have got your head screwed on and like I say but you've no went to uni or college do you think that's what gives you that for a like a degree, you no know, people go to get their degrees or whatever. I probably still never had a book out. Aye, man. So I think, I think, like what I learned at college was just kind of teaching you the basics. I think when you go to uni and that, and study creative writing. I think that can kind of, I don't know, it kind of polishes the edges off you. Know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You, I, what what I've wrote is it's quite raw. You know what I mean? There's no there's no education behind it. If you know what I mean, no higher education. You know what I mean? So it's it's just the way I thought it should be. Whereas uh-huh. if you go to uni, they're going to teach you. This is how you should do it. There's this rules. is how it should be. Aye, like, like regulations. Rules, but once I went to college, man, once you kind of learn the basics and then you learn a wee bit about the kind of rules, then you can kind of break them. You know what I mean? Mm. You can use that to make your stuff better, which is, which is uh-huh. good. So. But you've got, like I say, you're doing it, mate. You're doing it. it. <laughs> it's weird, mate. It's fucking weird, man. Because when I started writing, I was obviously never thought I'd be sitting where I'm now within... On my show, years, do you know what I mean? This is it, mate. Oh, see, English, aye, mate. He's <laughs> cracked it, man. He's, he, he, you broke through, mate. <laughs> your dreams have came reality. <laughs> Tattoos in the arse and everything. <laughs> no, it's, mate. it's been fucking. It's been a brilliant couple of years, man. I just hope it continues, man. I was saying to my mom, I was like, see if this all fucking came crashing down tomorrow, I'd still be chuffed at what I've achieved. No, I mean, I'd be fucking early moon, but I just want to keep it going as long as I can. Mate. Ah, that's only you're only selling yourself shortly. I say, you've, I keep it going, this man. is only the start of the journey for you. And we, like I say, we spoke about it before. The only person that can stop is yourself that's to it, get man. this book out. Another one, another one, oh, and I hope. The world's yours, mate. Ah, and that's the scary. That is, <laughs> mate. And it's, it's a scary part. And once you start actually seeing the results, you start actually believing in yourself. Know, you start actually getting <laughs> confident, and then it just becomes I natural. You're throwing out a book. Know, to get a book out is fucking unbelievable. <laughs> ah, it's fucking Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Do you think you get, you're getting the? Are you getting a lot of the Glasgow people behind you? I think so, man. I think people. Are, I think cause it is. Cause I've no been uni in that. I'm just a normal guy who's who's mm. done it. I mean, I'm no some middle class person with loads of money behind them who can afford mm-hmm. to just go to uni and then no work and write a book and then they know other people at the publishers so that's mm-hmm. how they get published you know what I mean I'm just, just brass necked it and I've grafted and I've just and that industry is all who you know in it to open all these doors and some of it aye some of it but your prime example that it doesn't matter any, just a vision and an idea aye, to create and I do it like, I hope people can see like, what I've done other writers and that other people who are getting knocked back and stuff. I hope you can see that if I can do it man they can do it and inspirational just fucking but you've got to keep, keep chipping away. Keep got to keep, keep drafting. Them, nah, you've got to keep chipping away. Who is this? Who is it? Ink 404 Ink? 404 Ink, they're called. They're um, just a new publisher for Edinburgh. So the fact that I was just starting it and they were just starting it, man, it's fucking match being heaven, you know what I mean? Because fucking then he's new at what I'm doing, you know what I mean? I think that's the best thing to do. It's been brilliant, man. Because they two, Laura and Heather, the uh, publishers, man, they've got the heat screwed on. They know what they're doing. They're fucking visionaries, man. Mm-hmm. They've gone to the tap. So. I think, that, like I say, when we've done our homeless documentary, we just. Went out and done it. I sat me, aye. And the same again. We've got to, we've just been confirmed for the Johnny Boy Steel uh, documentary, oh, the gangster one. But that's becoming mere pieces of the puzzle to, to create aye. something better. But sometimes I just like to roll the dice, and, and it works. Me. It aye. fucking works, man. I sat, man. And for us to achieve what we've done the last twelve months, for nothing but a vision, Brilliant. we've just winged it, I sat, and it's fucking aye. working. <laughs> so when, uh, when you meet people and it comes in, they say it, then it becomes more complicated. I've, I'm 
I've no patience. I want to get things done yesterday. <laughs> Aye, Do you know what I mean? But so, Aye. like I say, the other things we're doing, it's, going to, it's taking me a time. Aye. And it's good to learn from all these other people. Like I say, I'm a hundred mile an hour. Aye. Right, I'll do it. Let's go. I'll do it. Aye, but we just need to, I don't know, that's partly for me to learn and Aye. grow as a person to listen to other people because I think I know I've written and I still Aye. do. Aye. And it, <laughs> so when we do know these things, it's, it is, it's difficult. Aye. But now things are taking time and things are becoming longer. Like I say, you just winged that and it's what. But now, how did you, with the other one was more planned, the second book? Yeah, planned. It was a lot harder to write as well because there's more pressure on that. I mean, so right. haven't you? Obviously, live up to that the expectations. I thought it was going to, so I need to live up to that. I need to think, right, well, that's the base level. You know what I mean, mm-hmm. it needs to do it as well as that, if not better. So, mm-hmm. more pressure on it. It'll do better. It will, mate. But the bigger, uh, it, the bigger following you get, the more people that back you. Certainly and Glasgow is a tough city, mate. But there's still a, there's still a lot of backing for people. There's still aye, a lot of love. Real, mate. Aye, Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a great city. Everybody's aye. fucking crazy, but <laughs> I think every city's enough the same. Definitely, Do you know what mate. I mean? And we're doing it, mate. And like I say, to come on today, take your time. I appreciate that. So, how mm-hmm. can people get this book? I man, so you can get it from my publisher's website, fourofrank dot com. Um, Get it for Amazon, you can get it for Waterstones, get it for any book Look at you, yeah, Waterstone, Amazon. Amazon. <laughs> and the next one, how can we pre-order? That's the same, you can, you can pre-order on my publisher's website, forofwink.com again, or again on Amazon. If you just type mm-hmm. in Chris McQueer on Amazon, mm-hmm. you'll find it. And let me retweet this, you've got a copy, <laughs> Irvin Welsh, get involved. He's got a copy? Yeah, he's got a copy, aye. Let's see, mate, you never know, man. You might stumble oh, across this and go, you know what, I'm going to read that. Certainly. And, uh, Oh. Christy boy Aye, cheers for getting we've got a game mate. on Sunday mate we we'll won oh, no doubt Thomas Sheridan Wasn't played right. a stinker the last time so <laughs> fucking better get your finger out old Jean <laughs> listen mate everything you're doing massive respect for you Aye, I wish you nothing but the success mate. for the future and cheers big man all the best mate Absolute cheers pleasure, brother cheers, thank man. you boom